we've got a crazy topic today, which is how to spot counterfeit and fake nutritional supplements. I just want to go through an unbiased look at what you should be looking for. That's a big part of it. And then also how to spot the counterfeiters. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring this to you because you may have seen it in the news lately. I would say every three or four months or so, there's a journal article or there's an announcement from the FDA. And the FDA basically says this, we do not evaluate dietary supplements and the ingredients before they're sold, which means that whoever you are purchasing from, that nutritional supplement is not necessarily regulated. And for me, as someone that does formulate nutritional supplements, and as many colleagues in this industry that are trying to do great and helpful things for the world, there are, I wouldn't say as equally as many, but there are certainly, I would say, a third of products out there that do not have what they say that is in them. They are contaminated, which we'll talk about in just a moment, or they are falsely advertising um, something that is not actually able to do. So what I want to share with you, and I'm not even going to talk about my brand or any other brand. I just want to go through an unbiased look at what you should be looking for. That's a big part of it. And then also how to spot the counterfeiters. All right. The first thing is this. Although the FDA said that they do not regulate nutritional supplements, they actually can regulate the facilities in which certain nutritional supplements are manufactured. So we have multiple manufacturers only in the United States. So all of our products are actually produced in the United States. So that's one, like that's helpful, right? Because that can be better regulated because you don't necessarily know what you're getting from overseas. Might be great, but do you know? Maybe not. So you do want to see, does the company manufacture in the United States or does it manufacture in the country of origin? Let's say you live in Germany. If the product says manufactured in Germany, I don't think that you're necessarily going to have an issue there, right? And it will hopefully follow the clear and safe regulations of Germany. All right. Let me give you a different example, though. So when we choose our manufacturers, we give them these are the ingredients we want to use. This is the dosage that we would like them at. And then the manufacturer will source exactly what we are looking for. And then they will do what's called R&D, research and development, to see what size capsule may be needed and how it's going to fill. That's it. That's basically it. So they take exactly what we want, and then we work with them to fit it in a certain size capsule or a dosage of one, two, or three capsules. All right, so that's pretty normal. But here's the interesting thing. The facilities we use and many other functional medicine-based brands, so it's not just the company that I formulate for, they use facilities that are actually regulated by the FDA. So although the FDA doesn't regulate each supplement, they can regulate the way that you manufacture. So that's what we do. We use the highest quality regulated manufacturers, as well as something called GMP. And you'll see that on bottles, good manufacturing practices. That basically means that they're testing the dosage that's in the bottle is actually in the bottle. The ingredients that are in the bottle are actually in the bottle. Now, you can take it one step further. And I don't, I don't want to go too deep on this, but we use something called NSF um, certifying as well. Now, we don't say our products are NF certified for sports because we're not looking for the liability of using it in Olympics and this, that, and the other thing. We're not saying that. But our facility does that. And it does something else. It actually tests all of the raw material, like let's just say ashwagandha, which I spoke about yesterday, right? Or was that the day before on how it has been clinically proven? I went through nine studies on the exact dosage to use and how to use it. So anyway, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, show, I think, on how to reduce, simply reduce stress, anxiety, and potentially depression with literally one nutrient that comes from nature that's been used in Ayurvedic medicine for over five to 6,000 years. So anyway, I digress. So what we want, though, is to make sure that there are no heavy metals, that there's no aluminum, that there's no lead, that there's no mercury, no cadmium, no arsenic in any of the products. So a manufacturer can test the raw materials coming in to make sure that there's no contamination there. We actually had this happen recently. So we ordered a specific ingredient that we wanted in our universal binder. 
It turns out it's almost impossible to source this without any heavy metals in it. And so our universal binders used in our heavy metal detox wouldn't make any sense to put metals back in people's body. Now, the manufacturer actually said, well, you can use this product under a certain dose and it would pass guidelines. And we said, that doesn't sound okay. So we didn't do it, right? So part of it is the guidelines, part of it is the testing to know, and part of it is the company that you're working with. So we threw out $5,000 in raw material. Couldn't be used. It was contaminated. We didn't want it. Okay. I think that makes sense because I use these products myself for myself, my family, and my practice. And I consider our community an extension of our family. Like if you don't do it for your family, don't do it to others. Like it's an easy way to then be able to sleep at night, right? Okay. So that's a big part of it. But then there's one more part and that is testing the product after it's been manufactured to actually make sure the dosage is there. Because every once in a while, you see these studies and they grab 12 different brands and they're saying, this product didn't even have any creatine in it. This product didn't even have any B12 in it, or it had 50% the dosage. Well, if you use the manufacturer following these specific guidelines, then what is stated is what's in the product within a, about a 10% variance. That means that um, when you're blending, um, let's just say, 300,000 capsules, there's a slight variation. However, over the course of 30 days, it's, it all levels out. Like that's as perfect as you can get. And, and that's obviously very close, right? It's the difference between 45 milligrams of B6 and 55 milligrams of B6. It's supposed to be 50, right? That five milligrams over the course of a month, as it levels up between 45 and 50 and 55 one day, doesn't make any difference. Like just being honest and truthful with you, because I always like to give you behind the scenes look. Okay. So that's that. And you can always ask a company, do you have a certificate of analysis? Um, some companies can't, it, like we had 150 um, products, let's just say call it 100, and we were doing four turns a year, manufacturing them four times basically. And those products don't expire for two years. So at any given time, we had like 800 literally SKUs and different lot numbers as to where they would be, and it was impossible to track. We created a new system that was actually able to be able to track these things. And now we have our certificate of analysis on all the products up on the website that show um, the that it's the right dosage, all those things. But it goes one step further. It shows that there's no bacteria, that there's no heavy metals, there's no yeast, there's no mold. Anyway, so looking for that is very, very helpful. That's just like going that next high quality. But maybe you say to yourself, I don't really care about those things. I just want to make sure that when I'm taking magnesium, I'm not actually taking baking powder. Because believe it or not, there are counterfeiters out there that just get baking powder, which is innocuous. Like it's just, it's not harmful, right? Might give you a little upset stomach if you take enough of it. But they'll fill capsules with baking powder and it looks just like magnesium. And so people wouldn't know. And so part of that is like, you have to trust the company. And the second is that if it seems like too good of a deal, it's probably too good of a deal to be true. If you can buy magnesium for $19, I don't know, like, is it a good quality magnesium? I would be concerned knowing what I know now and how much it actually costs to manufacture that product. I don't think so. But anyway, uh, maybe you can. So you want to make sure that it's from a trusted company. And here's another way that you can actually look for it. Let's say that you are on, uh, people like to purchase products. I always recommend purchase directly from the website. That's the easiest way. Again, you can go to your favorite functional medicine based brand. They do the research. They do the third party testing. Those are the best companies to go with. You don't have to go with my company. You can go with any company, right? We just use ours out of necessity because we run a, a practice. Like we run a practice where we see, a, you know, thousands of a, tens of thousands of appointments every year, right? And, and 100,000 plus labs. So we, we want the products that we know are going to work to help get people balanced and healthy. Like that's basically it. But what I want to share with you is this. If you, do to per if you do decide to purchase from another website like Amazon, my highest recommendation is you look at the product and you look at the bottle and you're like, yeah, that looks exactly the same. However, this is the devious things that people do. And I want you to, so I want you to look, well, let me tell you the devious things they do. Then I'll tell you how to make sure that, that the real company is selling it. Okay. They will take a bottle of whatever your favorite company is and they will buy them at a discount close to expiration date when there's a sale. 
okay? Because the company's saying, this product expires in six months. As long as you know that, we would like to offer it to you at 30%, 50% off. And then what the company will do, or the, the counterfeiter will do, is it is the real product. But what they do is they scrape off the best buy date or the expiration date. And the reason it's so easy to do that, you can try it yourself right at home, but, but don't resell. That, that would be immoral, right? We don't want to do that. I'm not teaching you how to counterfeit. But what they'll do is they'll just take a little knife and they'll scrape off the expiration date, which is often on the bottom. And the reason it's so easy is that it's just ink printed on the bottle. It's stamped on the bottle. So it's very easy to wash off with an eraser, magic eraser, or um, or a knife. And you have to be really careful with this because people won't sell you a harmful per se product, but an expired product, which isn't, if it's not food-based, it's always not always that bad. However, the potency will be less. And that's an issue, right? So how do you get around this? Well, a manufacturer, a, a company will never sell you an expired product. And they also can't because Amazon has the expiration dates. So a counterfeiter reprints a new date on that just with a simple timestamp uh, and date stamp. So what do you do? Well, you look at the product name, then you look at the label. Okay, that's good. But then you want to look at who's it sold by. So let's call the company, um, the company's name is Functional Medicine a, uh, XYZ. Okay, so that's the name that you always buy your products from. But that isn't who's selling the product. So yes, it's your favorite magnesium product, whatever the special name that you want, functional medicine magnesium, right? Okay, sold usually by functional medicine XYZ. But under the seller, it's just this little blue link at the top. That's it. You can look on Amazon next time. It'll show you the seller. But this isn't sold by functional medicine XYZ, it's sold by, then they'll give it a really prestigious name called like prestigious labs, prestigious research. So it sounds really nice, but they're selling expired product, counterfeit fake product. So look for that. When you're buying a product, if on Amazon or I don't know, like I don't know who else sells it online. I'm, I'm kind of out of that loop. But if you, it's from whatever website, right? Look, is it sold by that uh, company or is it sold by somebody else? And if it's sold by somebody else, could be fine, but I would at least question it, especially if it's at a reduced price from the company's website. Because most people, most companies will never sell on Amazon less than they'll sell on their own website because they would rather have people go to their website. Because just, again, pulling back the curtain, truthfully, Amazon takes like 35% of your sales or whatever it is. So it's like a company doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, they want to be able to get it to people. They want to be able to make it convenient, all of that for sure. Amazon does 50% of all sales in the world. So it's like, yeah, they're they're the big guy. Um, but but a company would never do that. Like it, that, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that hopefully is helpful right there. And then there's a couple more things I want you to look for. If a bottle... And I wish I had a bottle right here with me. But let's say it's a glass vial. Like let's say it's a liquid melatonin, a vitamin D, a liquid vitamin D. There should be a shrink wrap around the neck of that bottle. You should not be able to just open that bottle and use it. You don't want to use the bottle if there is no shrink wrap on a liquid tincture. All right? Um, there's Again, there's a lot of great companies out there. Liquid tinctures... Always should have neck wraps, something that is you have to tear on that perforated line in order to be able to use. If it doesn't, don't use the product because you don't know if it's been contaminated. Okay, next one. All bottles, they don't need to have shrink wrap, but they either have to have shrink wrap or a seal when you twist the lid off. All right, so look for, look for those two. One, either the plastic seal neck wrap can't be touched, can't be contaminated with, or the seal on the inside. Now, having been in this industry now for seven years or so, I will say that the seal sometimes loses its stickiness and pops off as you're opening it. I don't necessarily worry about that as much uh, unless you look inside and the capsules are 
wet or they're discolored or, or something like that. That's a different story. Um, but for the most part, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, so, so there you have it, especially if you know you're getting it directly from the company that you purchased it from. So look for a seal in some way, either on the outside of the body bottle or on the inside under the lid. I think there's just a couple more that I wanted to share with you here today. And yeah, the last one, but I don't fault a company for this. I really don't. A lot of them, so a, a company should not relabel a bottle. That means put one label over another. And if you see that, that's questionable. You know why? Now, I understand why some companies do it. It's because they don't want to dump out all the pills and, and all of those things. So they relabel it um, with an updated label. That's possible. That's possible. So you might want to contact the company if you see that, but be a little bit uh, weary of that. Now, the last one is, and this happens with small companies, they paper label their bottles. That means it's not a professional sticky base label. And Again, if you know the company and you're comfortable with them and it's like this small local company that you're trying to support and you bought it at a farmer's market and all that, probably no big deal. Probably no big deal. But they're, they're most likely not following good manufacturing pra pra practices. And here's why. Our bottles can't leave the manufacturer without a label on them. An FDA-regulated facility which is what all large functional medicine uh, supplement manufacturers use, they can't ship you bottles without a label on it. It's illegal. It will not pass their guidelines. So if you're getting a bottle with a paper label, like not a glassy, gl glossy, sticky label, you are not most likely working with a GMP-based facility. And it doesn't mean that it's bad. But you do need to really know that company just to make sure what's going on there. And, and I think that that's, that's valid. That's, that's worthwhile. Because, again, it could be a small. I remember back in the day with CBD, people had printed their own labels. They created it themselves. And I would buy some at a local farmer's market. And I felt comfortable buying it from the owners. I, I felt comfortable. They had no neck seals on it or anything, right? Uh, but I felt comfortable. Uh, for the most part, 99% percent of the time, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that uh, for sure. I would have to directly know the individual and that it was done properly. So hopefully this show was helpful here today, kind of gives you a peek behind the curtain as to what to look for, where to look for it, and just to make sure, obviously, that you're staying safe out there. The majority of people are doing the right thing, giving you great quality products. And just when in doubt, though, you know, Look for the specific things done in the right way to make sure you're getting the right product each and every time. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, of course, do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.